Moving on, we will now talk about administrative access, where I'm going to tell you a little bit about the different methods available for FortiGate or just FortiOS administration. And next, we will take a look at how to enable management access or just admin access to the firewall system and finally go through what is known as a setup wizard. The first thing I want to mention is that not all 48 devices support a dedicated management port, which is something that a lot of organizations use for out-of-band administration. We are talking about a dedicated interface that is separated from the data network and used just for administration. Mid-size and high-size appliances, uh, physical appliances, 48 systems, they do support, most of them do support a management interface. But for the desktop versions and smaller 48 platforms, you will not find a management interface. But it still it doesn't mean that you will not be able to do out of band management because you can designate one pretty much any unused interface for management. Just choose any of the data ports that you don't connect to the data network. Make it uh, you can make it a management port simply by configuring it to accept incoming administrative connections. We will uh, see how to do this in our network as well. We have a couple of different methods of how we can manage 40 gate devices. Uh, one is to use the command line. A command line, command line is what we already saw how to use in the uh, previous session. One additional thing I want to mention is that a CLI is something that you will generally use the first time when you deploy, initialize the system when you perform an initial firewall setup just to give it an IP address um, so you can connect for administration using the GUI or so you could uh, you could then perform what is known as the registration with a 4D manager, another administration method. Uh, but there are going to be also occasions where you will still want to use CLI even if you have GUI access, which is going to be cases when you want to do some troubleshooting, a basic verification, you want to do it quick. Um, a command line is going to be a good place to look at when when you run into a situation like that. Plus, there will be some really tiny features that you will not be able to run using the GUI. So CLI is something that you will also have to use for those very little features that you will not be able to configure from the GUI. Okay, GUI is going to be our primary method for configuring 40 gate systems. We will use a web interface. Uh, we can use what is known as local administration, which is when you connect to, to the firewall directly from the management station. Like in my case, it's going to be Windows PC that I will use to connect port 3. So port 3 is going to make my management interface. In this case, I will use it for administration. And this is going to be a direct connection. I'm going to open up a browser on Windows PC and connect to the firewall to manage it. Now, as an alternative, and also something that you would normally use in larger networks, like when you have five plus firewalls, is known as for the manager, which is a centralized approach to graphical administration. With a for the manager, the idea is that the actual configuration changes will be sent and enforced by a dedicated appliance for the manager. For the manager is what is going to enforce our configuration on the different firewall systems. So we can have multiple 40 gate firewalls all managed from a single place. And what we will do in this case is that we will use our management PC to connect to the 4D manager. So this is going to be a regular web connection to the manager. And the manager is where we will make the changes, change the config, but the actual enforcement is going to be done at the manager level. So it's going to be 4D manager what is going to send configuration changes to individual firewalls. 
And the last option here that is commonly used by DevOps teams, by programmers, or any type of application scripts is a REST API. So API is what we will use for automated management and administration. Uh, this is the REST technology, what the REST API calls, what FortiGate is going to accept. And we will be able to either read or just modify the configuration, so perform regular CRUD operations. We can also take a look at this under Administration Guide a System and then Using APIs. And just to quickly show you how to get to Fortinet's FortiGate's documentation, I would just type docs FortiGate on Google, which is going to show you a link to docs.fortinet.com, this one here. And from, from here, just go ahead and click on FortiGate, select the version you are using in a network. In my case, it's going to be 7.6. And this is where you can open the Open Up Administration Guide. Uh, we will now go down to System and using APIs. Okay, so system and then using APIs is where you will find information about REST. API calls, notice that FortiGate supports token-based authentication, which means that you will have to generate a token for a specific account. And once you've got the account and the token, you will need to send, include the token in every request either as a URL option or inside of the request header, which is a recommended method. Now, in order to connect to the firewall for management, the first thing that I would do it would be to designate a management interface and then configure this interface with an IP address and also use the set allow access command which is what makes an interface a management port because this is where you can specify what type of protocols uh, you will uh, the interface is going to accept for administration or basically the protocols that the interface is going to process could be stuff like telnet uh, like ssh it's also pink so this command basically controls what protocols, what traffic, management traffic, the interface is going to accept and process. Now, in our case, if we take a look at uh, my network here, I want to use port 3 for administration. This interface is to be a part of 172.16.1 network. I want to give it that 10. So I will just go to the command line. I will log in. And then I'm going to say config system interface. You can also say show to take a look at the default settings. We see that the interfaces, they don't have any errors here. So I'm going to say go to the right interface, which in my case is and once again, port 3. I will say edit port 3. I'm going to say give it and uh, specify the mode of address configuration, which is going to be static. Then give it an IP address using the CIDR notation 172.16.1.10 slash 24, no spaces here. And I will say make it a management interface, accept HTTP, HTTPS, and let's also make it pingable like that. I'm going to quickly say show to verify. You could also say get. And just don't forget to commit or just kind of like force and force these changes. You can say next or and. I'm going to say and. And you will then say show system interface port 3. These settings are now enforced. They are now in place which means that, that I can now go to my Windows PC, which is connected to the same subnet. 
Then open up a browser, connect to 172.16.1.10 using HTTPS. We're gonna accept self-signed certificate, accept the warning message, and I'm gonna authenticate as admin with my password that I configured when I connected to the firewall for the first time. Because technically the, the first time co connection password is um, empty, so you can authenticate as admin and you leave a password blank, but the system is gonna automatically ask you what a new password you wanna set for the device. Now also notice that when you for connect to the GUI for the first time, this is gonna trigger what is known as the setup wizard. And the setup wizard is all about configuring some additional, um, additional, some basic options that you want the system to use to start. Uh, first and foremost, Fortinet wants you to register the device uh, with uh, um, the 40 care account, 40 care, or just 40 cloud account, so the system can uh, download the uh, updates. So this is known as the registration. You also have the ability to convert the old code configuration to the new code config, like when you go from the older uh, 40 gate to the newer one. You have an option to customize the look and feel of the different dashboards and widgets that you will see when you connect using the GUI. And it is also going to ask you about a new host name and a password for the user, unless you already configured this stuff earlier. We go back, we will uh, say begin. Okay, I don't really have anything to migrate. I'm going to say uh, skip the migration. I'm going to disable automatic patch, upgrades, I acknowledge. I'm going to choose the optimal set of dashboards, which is popular defaults, popular default dashboards for 40 view monitors. You can also go for comprehensive and customize uh, this stuff, but I will not be doing that. I will just click OK. And let's also disable and the messages that would be normally shown when you connect. And here we are, we just connected to a new 40 gate. So we see we've got a bunch of menus on the left hand pane. This is what we will use for configuration and verification. Also troubleshooting of this system. And here is our uh, dashboard switch. We can also customize, we can add new widgets, remove the, uh, the existing stuff, uh, change the settings, resize, and so on. With that in place, we can now move on and take a look at specific features of 4DOS and 40Gate next generation firewall.